All right, let's talk about atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation, or AFib, is when you're having problems with the atria. So if you remember, the heart is in four chambers, the top two chambers being the atriums, and the bottom two chambers being the ventricles. So the job of the atria is not to, is to supply blood to the ventricles. It is then the ventricles job to supply blood, blood out of the heart. And from the right side, this would be supplying it to the lungs, and from the left side, this would be supplying it to the body. So the atria's job is just to take this amount of blood and push it down to the ventricles. Now, atrial fibrillation is when these atrium are now beating very fast and, and to the point where they may even not be, for starters, they're beating faster than the ventricles. And so that's a problem in that uh, they may be beating and trying to push blood into the ventricle while the ventricle itself is trying to beat. And if that happens, this may be open and the ventricle is trying to push and so you're not having good exchange of blood between the atrium and the ventricles. And also the ventricles may be pushing blood more towards the atrium and not out of the heart and so it decreases cardiac output. Now the atrial uh, fibrillation refers to they may be eating so fast that they're not so much contracting but at this point they're just quivering and so instead of uh, just a bunch of fast squeezes that are at a bad time they may get to the point where they're just fibrillating and, and at this point there's a little to no movement of blood from the atrium into the ventricles. How can you tell this on the EKG? When you look at the EKG, what you should, should be looking for is a P wave indicating an atrium, then the QRS, which is a ventricle, and then a T wave, which is it relaxing. Now, what happens is the P, P wave, which represents the atrium, the atrium are just going in overdrive. So what you'll see is no definitive P, but you'll just see a, a, a bajillion jags. And what this is, is this is showing, this is what the, the, the atrium are doing, is they're just fibrillating. There's no real rhythm to it. Then you'll see a normal QRS, bunch of jags, normal QRS, bunch of jags, normal QRS, and so this is a sign of atrial fibrillation. So what are some causes of atrial fibrillation? Uh, having abnormal electrolytes in the body. Uh, potassium and magnesium, for example, are very important. Um, and so when these electrolytes are thrown off the heart, may be firing abnormally. Other causes, uh, increased cardiac demand. So if a patient is uh, having respiratory issues or they have hypovolemia or they're in some sort of shock, the heart is trying to speed up to compensate to assist the body to meet its oxygen demands and the heart may not be able to compensate and it may be thrown into atrial fibrillation. And some patients just have this chronically is something that they live with uh, for their entire lives. Okay, so what does this result in? Two problems. One, I told you blood's not going where it needs to go. It can decrease cardiac output. Uh, and you can see this by patients' blood pressures dropping and not getting oxygen to where it needs to go. Another problem is when there's not good blood supply, the blood is being stagnant in that atrium. And if the blood just sits here, uh, when blood's not in motion, it clots. And so it develops emboli, which is a blood clot that will be moved through the body. And so these blood clots can move to the lungs and cause pulmonary embolism. They can go to the brain and cause a stroke. They can be deposited throughout the body causing deep vein thrombosis, which is uh, or DVTs in the extremities. And so atrial fibrillation is a pretty serious deal. So if it's due to electrolytes, you want to give them uh, the electrolytes that they need. If it's uh, cardiac demand, you might want to give them oxygen. Uh, in some cases, you'll want to give them, uh, they'll need cardioversion to shock the heart into a normal rhythm. But most of the time, you can give them medications, uh, such as beta blockers or digox, and what they'll do is they'll decrease the heart rate. And one thing you'll want to know about beta blockers is sometimes you'll give a patient a low dose of a beta blocker, and you'll be looking at the patient's heart rate, and you'll be looking at their blood pressure, and you say, well, this patient doesn't really need a blood pressure pill, but it may be a low dose not to lower the blood pressure, but to treat their chronic atrial fibrillation. And uh, patients that are on it chronically, uh, also you'll, you'll probably be going to be on an anticoagulant. 
maybe Plavix, maybe Coumadin. Uh, and what this is going to do is it's going to prevent the development of blood clots in those atrium. So they may be still living and walking around and talking day to day with atrial fibrillation. But it's going to keep them from developing those blood clots in their heart. So this is atrial fibrillation.